goodness gracious. Okay. Hopefully you can hear me again. My goodness, so many technical difficulties. Let me get this screen here. Okay. So sorry about that. Here are the patterns we have available on our website. So there's this cute owl, barn owl. We've got some reflection from the light. You can see that. And the rooster. My goodness, now we just have lots of technical difficulties. Let's see if I turn that down. Turn it up. Yep. <laughs> okay, and then the peacock. Isn't she pretty? And then the one I'm working on right now is the lion. So the link for this is in the description box. And we have fabric kits available for all of these as well. So we've got peacock and rooster and the barn owl and the lion. Okay, let's turn that light back on. It's too dark. So super fun, super easy. We have everything you need to start this project on our website. And then we also have a kit full of all the essential tools you might need. So this box is just perfect. It fits everything inside, all the fabric, the project, even as you're working on the project, it will fit in here. So here's my lion and he will fit in this box so I can travel with him. You just kind of have to fold them up, stick them in there. So anyway, this kit comes with this little storage container. Um, it'll come with some glue. You can just use Elmer's glue to do this project. It washes right out. It's really easy and it keeps that fabric stabilized really well. And I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. You'll get some little snippers and then this cute little fabric or this needle minder case. So um, you get one of these little clips to help. They're called wonder clips. And those will hold, help hold your um, fabric pieces together when you're sewing. Um, this cool little thing is a, uh, it's a thimble that you just stick to your finger to help push the needle through when you need to. Um, I haven't really needed to use a thimble, but I did use those when I started out because my, my finger wasn't calloused enough right there where I needed it to. Or, I mean, it's not callous that you can see, but um, it's definitely stronger now that I can push the needle through and it doesn't hurt. So this will hold your needle. We use a very long, thin uh, milliner's needle. And it also comes with a little needle threader in case you need that. And then there is an option on our website that you can um, add your thread to it as well. There's lots of different kinds of thread that you can use with this project. I just stick to my Orville because I have a lot of this around and it seems to work well. Um, the very first EPP project I did, I used a 100% polyester fabric, I mean thread, and um, that helps because occasionally the cotton can shred as you're passing it through uh, beside those papers. So um, this will all make sense in a minute as I get going on here, but I just kind of want to show you all of the tools that you can get. Um, I love using Ziploc bags to organize my pieces just easy, easy peasy kind of stuff. Don't need to make it too hard. Okay, let me open up one of these patterns. So we'll look at the lion today. And this comes with all of the pieces of paper that you're going to need to stabilize all of the fabric. So as you can see, you can make it in any kind of color that you want. Um, this one is brown with the outside being the burgundies and pinks. So pretty. And then I made mine like this where the main is burgundies and pinks and the outside is gray. So fun. So when you get your kit, you'll open it up and it has a pattern 
on one side of the instructions. And you can color this as well if you want to change the colors. But she has a suggestion of colors down here, and they all have a different shape to go with them. So this little kitty cat, oh, let's see if I can find the screen. There we go. <laughs> Is a, a light gray color. So you would just match all of the pieces that are the kitty with the light gray and so on and so on. So like this red is kind of this flower pattern. So you would just find all of those pieces and stabilize them on your red. Pretty neat, huh? And then this side has all the instructions you need on how to glue base your um, fabric to the paper and how to do a whip stitch. So um, if you are more of a reader for instruction than a visual, then this is gonna be super easy for you. And then the back has suggestions on what kind of fabrics and stuff you might want. We followed these suggestions for our kits. So you will get um, pretty much every single one of these fabrics in your kit um, and everything that you will need for this, for this lion. And then um, also in the kit are all of your pieces. So it's almost like a little puzzle that you're gonna put together. So you would just break apart all of these little pieces and there's lots of little sheets to organize them according to the design that they have on them, which will coordinate with the color that you need. So that is how you start that. Um, let me grab one of my pieces that I have cut out already. And because these are kind of a cardboard you can reuse these. I mean, it's thin, it's not cardboard. It's, um, oh, my brain didn't get very much sleep last night. So excuse me. Um, it's a thicker paper. What is that called? Tell me in the comments. I can't remember. Help my brain out here. Anyway, you can reuse these pieces of paper. So let me grab a scrap of fabric here. We're going to make this one a dark blue. So you would just take your piece and put just a little dot of glue on the back. Oh, this glue is about gone. There we go. Just a little tiny dot because you want this to be able to come off later easily. And then you just put it on your fabric, on the back of your fabric. Because this fabric is solid, there's not a right or a wrong side, but you would put it on your wrong side. And then you can take your scissors or your rotary cutter and just cut it out just about a quarter inch away or maybe even a little bit more. And it can just be a rough cutout. It doesn't have to be super precise or anything. Then you'll take your glue stick and just do a thin line of glue on the paper itself and then fold that over. And I like to really press it with my finger against that edge so I get it tight. And then do the opposite side next so that you get your fabric tight. Okay. And then I'm gonna do the top. Since it kind of disappeared for me, I'm gonna put it right there and feel. Okay, let me put a little more glue inside of there. And then we'll do it again on this side. And that is how you stabilize your fabric on all the pieces of paper. So then you would just put this in your Ziploc baggie with all the pieces that are that same deer shape that's on there. And keep them all organized. And that way, when you get to that piece, you'll know how to find it. Pretty easy. Let's do another one so you can kind of see how that works. So this one is also a deer. Oh, I can't find the camera. There we go. So just put a little tiny bit of glue on the back. And then I just match it up with where I cut last. And then just rough cut around it. So there's about a quarter inch, give or take, around the outside. Okay, then I'm going to do 
this side first and just put a thin line of glue right there on the paper and fold it over. And you can feel where the paper is. And then rotate it and do the opposite side. Just a thin amount of glue on the paper. Okay. Card stuck. Thank you. Yep. That's what it's called. Oh my goodness. We had such a night last night. I don't know what it was. If it's like the barometer changing or if it was just because we had a little bit of a lazy Sunday or what, but we could not sleep last night for anything. So I am a little brain dead today. Okay. So that is how you stabilize it. And this little tail here, um, you can just leave that on there unless it's really in your way. Then I would trim it just a little bit. Don't trim it all the way close to there, but just a little bit so you have a tail. So now when you put these pieces together, I'm going to show you how to do that next. And I have all of my next color stabilized. So here is my lion that I've been working on. Isn't that cool? I mean, he's huge. Look at him. Huge. So you can see the back, there's all the different pieces of paper and they're all color coded with their little um, image. So it makes it really easy. It's just like a puzzle being put together that you're sewing together instead of uh, gluing to a piece of cardboard or something. But I haven't done any of the, the grays yet. So let me see where I left off. Well, let's back up real quick. Where do we start? So the instructions had said to start with number one and then go to number two and number three. Um, you can really put this together however you think it's going to go together best. Um, I did start with number one, which is this little piece right here. And then number two is his eyeball here. And then number three is this big one. So I would sew these two pieces together first and then add number three because it's that full length there. And then number four is this elephant here. So he would be sewn right to that line right here. And then to add number five, you would sew it to his eyeball here, which is number two. And then flip it to number four and sew it to number four. So it just slowly grows as you sew. And the other cool thing with this cardstock is you can fold it and bend it as you um, put it together. So if the seam isn't quite lining up with the other seam, like once I got to here, um, I had to bend some of this cardboard to get this to lay correctly. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, ask me in the comments and I'll try to clarify that. Okay, so I ended down here. So I think I'm going to start with the kitty cat. And the numbers are 117 and 116. So I would just go through and find those pieces. So there's 116 and 117. And I tend to get them out in pairs and then work one section and then work the other section before I put it together and then put the middles to connect both. Okay, so here is 116. And it is supposed to go right here in between 74 and 75. Okay, so you can see how it lines up right here. So I'm going to do that side first. And I like to work right to left myself. So I'm going to rotate my pieces and just match up those corners with the other corners. Now, occasionally these pieces don't match up very well and you might have to kind of finagle them, especially when um, there is, let me see if I can show you an example. Okay, so see, let's see, if you can zoom in there. 27 connects to 55 and 54 right there. So there's a line. So I found that sometimes there's a little bit of a bulky seam with the fabric that this doesn't want to line up correctly. So what I found is if I start on one side and sew to that line and then stop 
and start back over on the other corner and sew to that line then they'll um, match up better than if I just started here and sew down. I would have a huge hang, um, hanging piece that wouldn't match the corner like it's supposed to right there. So that's a little trick for you. Start on one side and just stop at the line that it meets up with and then start over to meet up with that piece. So back to this piece here. Actually, let me get my needle ready really quickly. I have been using a light yellow thread for this, which seems to be blending in fairly well. It's um, a pretty thin thread, so it doesn't really matter if it's a little bit different on here. I mean, you can't see it too well. If you're real, real up close, you can probably see a little bit, but not too bad. And we're just using a simple whip stitch, and I'm going to show you how to do that if you haven't learned how to do a whip stitch before. And I do use a single thread. I don't double thread this. So um, you're just gonna use one thread. And I like to make a quilter's knot, which you just moisten your finger a little bit and then pinch it. Let's see if I can get in the camera better. Then you're gonna pinch it between your two fingers, roll it around and then spin it with your thumb until it comes off your finger, pinch it with your ring or your middle finger and pull tight. And that will give you a little knot. Okay, so let me do that one more time. So you're going to wrap the thread around your finger and your um, thumb and roll it between your thumb and your finger a couple times and then roll it off your finger pinch it with your thumb and your middle finger to slide it down to make that knot. Pretty easy. And then I have a little bit of a tail here. Okay. Now this is where the little um, wonder clip can come in handy. Is when you put these together while you're getting everything figured out, you can use your little wonder clip to clip those in place so you don't have to hold on to them. All right, now we're gonna stick the needle up through this side of the fabric so that our knot gets hid underneath that seam. Okay, and it's gonna come right out that point. Can you see that? So it's going right underneath the fabric and out the point of that peach colored fabric. And then I just pull all the way through to the knot. Okay, and then we're not going through the paper. We're just going on top of the paper through the fabric. So I'll just catch the needle right in the corner of that gray fabric and go straight through the peach fabric and pull through. And you're gonna do that same spot about three times and that just secures that stitch right there. Okay, and then it's the exact same kind of um, motion that you just did. You're just gonna go in to the top fabric and through the back fabric, just catching a few threads of your fabric, not going through the paper. Sometimes it gets stuck around that. So make sure that you pull it all the way to the fabric. And then you would just keep going. So hang out with me here while I get to the end and then I'll show you how to tie it off. How's everyone doing during quarantine? Are you finding projects to keep yourself busy? Has anybody been making masks yet? I know I've seen a couple of you posting um, the patterns and the ones that you've been making. If you haven't, 
don't feel guilty for not making them. Sometimes our bodies just need a rest and this is a good time to take a little break. And if you're still working from home and homeschooling kids, there's no shame in taking care of your family first. But if you have time, if you have extra fabric, you want to make some masks, go for it. That would be awesome. If you're finding this video helpful and fun, I would love for you to tag your friends in it or share it on your timeline or share it in any groups that you're in for quilting, if that's allowed. This is a fun project to do while you're just sitting on the couch, binging on Netflix, or um, once we're able to get out and socialize again, it's just a fun thing to do together. Or when you're waiting for kids or sitting in the car or at the doctor's office, I mean, I've taken it everywhere. It's just a simple, handy little thing. Okay, we're almost there. So as you can see, I am putting a lot of stitches in there. I'm probably going about an eighth of an inch or so apart on my stitches. And that will help keep it secure. When you've done this a lot, it becomes pretty brainless. So you can just sit back and relax and just whip it out. Okay, we are at the end now. So I'm going to take that stitch at the very tip and then through the tip of the peach. And we're going to go through that one three times, just like we did at the beginning. Two, three. Okay. And then I'm going to go under one of those stitches. Okay, and this is how I like to make my knot. So I went under, and now before I pull through, I have this loop here, okay? So with that loop, I'm gonna take my needle and go under it two times, and then gently pull it tight till it's to the fabric. Okay, I hope you can see that. I'm kind of leaning over my table here. <laughs> okay, so I went under that loop two times and pulled tight. And now I'm going to tuck this thread back under the seam. So you're just going to put your needle back under there and tuck it in underneath the fabric. See how I kind of have to bend the paper a little bit to get the needle to come out and then just clip it. Need my scissors. I'm going to go ahead and knot my thread again. Okay, so now this is going to go to this piece. So to get it over there, we need to fold this piece of paper to lay flat so that this will lay flat against the pink one. Okay, so I'll just kind of match up the corners again and then just press that flat. Makes it easy. And then you can use your, your little wonder clip to hold it in place. And since I like to start on the right, instead of starting in this bulky seam where all of these little tails are, I'm going to flip the project around and start it on this side instead and work my way to the middle. So it's easier if you can start from the outside of your block and work to the middle. Okay, so I think you get the gist of all of that. So let me move on to the next step, which is just popping out the pieces of paper. So once you have sewn on all of the sides of the paper, you can take that paper out. You don't have to leave it in there for the whole project. You can just take it out once you're done sewing around the whole thing. I kind of like to leave it in there because it keeps the project stiff, 
but there were a few places where um, I just needed to take them out in these little ones right here. So if they are kind of in your way and you've already sewn around the whole thing, you can just take it out. So I'm going to show you how to take this one out. So the, the fabric just gently comes right off of there. Just kind of work it all the way around. And then it should just pop right out. And there is there a little bit of glue right there that I had glued the paper down. So you just kind of have to get your fingers underneath there and pop it out. And there's just a little bit more there. And that's done. So this paper can be reused as long as it's not all teared and doesn't have a whole bunch of glue already kind of stuck to it. You've probably use it over two or three times. Um, you will see that there's a little bit of perforation on the side where my needle ran through the paper, but that's okay. You can reuse it. So make sure you put those in a Ziploc bag when you're done so you can save those. Um, and then once you are done with your quilt top, then you would just quilt it either um, on your domestic machine or you could long arm it. You could turn it into a wall hanging, um, table toppers. You can make, um, there's lots of different patterns that you can make smaller ones to make like pot holders, or you could use it to make a whole quilt out of this. Um, so the designer of these patterns that I have is Violet Craft, and she is coming out with a lamb here soon. So I would love to put a couple lambs with this lion. Um, he reminds me of Aslan um, or how Jesus is the lion and we're the lambs. So I'd love to put a couple of those with that and then make a little uh, baby blanket or a wall hanging or something out of it. So just something fun to do. I have the peacock and the owl done already and they um, are just sitting waiting for me to quilt them. So we'll see what happens with that. But let me flip you back to the other screen here. Make sure you can still hear me. Yeah, now it's coming out. Okay. Thanks so much for joining me today. And I hope you have a great night that you're hanging in there during this quarantine. And um, if you need anything, just let me know. Um, I hope that this inspires you to be able to make your own EPP project and post your pictures on this site. I'd love to see them. Have a great night. Have a great see night. you.